Hey everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to have a quick demonstration on how to install Jenkins on Kubernetes. And we'll also be using Kaneko to build container images. So you may be asking, what is Kaneko and why is it that we need to use it? And I'll link to this GitHub repository in the video description below. But in a nutshell, Kaneko is a tool that is used to build container images from a Docker file. And it's used inside of a container or inside of a Kubernetes cluster. So this is the perfect solution for us if we want to be able to build and push Docker images from within our Kubernetes cluster. And we'll show you how to walk through that setup during this installation. So as always, I've created a document that will accompany this video. I'll link that in the tutorial, uh, rather in the description below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we do need a virtual machine that's running a Kubernetes cluster. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna use a single node cluster, which I'll deploy using K3S. For production, you wanna make sure that you've got a cluster that is properly configured. It has all the permissions that are set up correctly, you've got storage classes and persistent volumes. We're not going to do any of that for this demonstration. We're just going to show you how to get Kubernetes uh, running with Jenkins. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to sign into our virtual machine and make sure that we've got the latest version of our packages. So let's copy this command and then jump into our virtual machine and make sure everything is updated. The next thing that we need to do is create a Kubernetes cluster. So I've created a, a few commands here that you can follow along if you want to also use a K3S cluster. Uh, but you can also do this inside of Minikube or even inside of an AWS EKS or GKE cluster, for example. So let's go ahead and run these series of commands. In my case, I'm going to be just, uh, deploying K3S with a load balancer so that we can access the Jenkins service directly from a load balancer IP address. Again, that's going to be outside of the scope of this video. If you have any questions on actually how to set that up, please let me know in the description below and I'll answer any questions that you may have. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we copy the cube config into our local user account and set the appropriate permissions so that when we go to deploy our Jenkins from Helm, we have the correct access into the cluster. So now that we've done that, let's take a look to make sure that we can actually talk to the Kubernetes cluster. And it looks like I may have copied the cube config incorrectly, yes. So let me do that again. So now that we know that we have access to our cluster, the next thing that we need to do is we need to install the Helm chart for Jenkins CI. I'm gonna be using the official Jenkins CI Helm chart, and you can see that here in the documentation. Another prerequisite is to make sure that you do have Helm installed installed on your configuration or your setup as well. So let's go ahead and copy this command and update our Helm charts. And then we'll create a namespace where Jenkins is going to run. And this tutorial, we'll just use the Jenkins namespace. Now, before we go ahead and actually deploy the Jenkins application itself, we're going to go ahead and set up the service accounts as well as a persistent volume, because we want to make sure that if the pods do restart any of the configuration or any of the data that's been performed in Jenkins remains available after a restart. We'll also make an adjustment to the values file. So we'll set our password ahead of time and we'll also change instead of using a cluster IP to use a load balancer IP. Again, those are outside of the scope of this tutorial, but if you have any questions, just drop a comment and I will be sure to help you out. So let's go ahead and download the three files that I have staged here. So if we could quickly take a look at the service account, this actually just goes through and sets up our cluster roles and the service account. And then we have a Jenkins volume file here. For this tutorial, I've just gone ahead and set up a eight gig persistent volume and I'm just using the local host path. The one file that you will want to adjust is the values file. So here, if you do a search for username, I've already uncommented it, but by default, this will be commented out. So just uncomment it and set it to a password of your choice. Since this is a tutorial, I'm just going to use password. And then the one final adjustment that I'll make in this configuration is for the service type, I'm going to replace that from cluster IP and I will use a load balancer. So now that we have that done, we need to apply those. So let's go ahead and apply the service account first. Next, we'll 
apply our volume and then we just want to make sure that the volume is created it is important that you check that the pvc or the pv gets created because without this you may notice that the pods don't start so in our case you can see that everything is available so if we head back into the documentation the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a secret for our docker hub credentials now this is important because since we're deploying through helm and we're pulling from a docker hub registry you may run into a rate limit so it's a good practice to make sure that you have a docker hub credential configured so you can avoid the rate limit issues that you may come into i've got the command here that you can copy and paste you just want to replace your username your personal access token and then your email address so I've actually already got the command here. And don't worry, I know I'm showing the, the personal access token here, but I will be deleting that after this tutorial is complete. Now that that's done, the last thing that we need to do is we need to install Jenkins itself. So again, we're gonna do that through Helm. We're gonna install the application as the name Jenkins. We're gonna use the Jenkins CI slash Jenkins chart, deploy it into the Jenkins namespace. We'll create the namespace if it's not already created, and then we'll pass it the override values. Now you will see some output. So depending on the adjustments that you've made in your override file, the output does show you how to fetch your admin password in case you didn't set it in the values file. It'll also also show you how to access the Jenkins URL if you choose to do some type of port forwarding or use a node port. Let's see and watch our pods to make sure that they come up. So if we do a kubectl get pods dash a, we can see that the Jenkins pods are still initializing. You can see that wand has now come up. And then within a few moments, you'll see that the next Jenkins pod will become available. So while that starts, let's go ahead and take a look at our services. And in my case, since I had selected a load balancer, it has come up on this IP address and it will be available on port 8080. So let's take another quick look and we can see that Jenkins has indeed finished starting. So now we should be able to access Jenkins by using our virtual machine's IP address and port 8080. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this watch command running because we'll do a quick deploy of a sample pipeline and you'll see how a ephemeral agent node will come online to run our job. So let's now head back into a browser and go to port 8080 and you can indeed see that Jenkins is now running and we can sign in using admin and for the password we set that as password. There's one important thing to do once you've completed the install. You'll notice that the Kubernetes plugin is outdated. So please make sure that you go into the plugin manager and then apply the latest updates. If you don't apply the latest updates, you'll run into a problem where the agent node will not be able to come online. So you wanna make sure that you actually can do that. So let's keep an eye on this and we'll see that Jenkins is restarting. And then as that restarts, I'm gonna go over to my GitHub and I'll link this in the, the description below as well. But I've got a, a job here that, uh, rather a application that I've deployed with Canico that's been deployed. So if you take a look at our complete end-to-end -end production, I believe this is the right repo. So you can see here that I've got a, a Canico builder and this Canico builder is a pod and we're going to download the, the executor and then we're going to run that inside of our Kubernetes cluster. This will also use the Docker credentials. So it's important to make sure that you have those set up as well. So let's go back in here and we'll want to clone this. So let's go ahead and copy this and then we can go back into our shell prompt and we can see that Jenkins is now restarted. Let's uh, clone this repository. Okay, so we can see that that Canico builder is here. I just wanted to make sure that it was publicly accessible. So the next thing that we can do is we can head back into our browser and we can sign back in as our user admin and password, and then we'll do a quick test. So I'm not gonna go through the, the Jenkins file. I have another tutorial that talks in great detail about how to set up a pipeline. So I encourage you to check that video out if you have any questions on that. So for now, we're just gonna actually use that same exact repository uh, that I referenced uh, in the earlier video. And we'll just create a, a quick test pipeline referring to that. So let's go ahead and create a generic pipeline. And what we'll do is we'll actually pull that in from an SCM. We'll use Git and then or 
for the repository, we can use this repository and, and it's public so you can access this as well. We don't need any credentials. It is running in the main branch and then we can save. And there's one change that we wanna make. So here you can see Jenkins file. So this is the Jenkins file that we've created in our previous tutorial. But what we wanna do here is we wanna use this Jenkins-Kate. So this Jenkins-Kate is going to use the Kubernetes worker agent, and then it's gonna launch the Canico Builder YAML that we just described earlier that will actually be used to build our containers. And then the rest of the actual Jenkins file just goes through and clones the same repository and then uses Canico to build and push that. So this is quite straightforward and should be self-explanatory. So with that, let's make sure that we select the correct Jenkins file here. We can apply, save, and then let's build this now. So in just a few moments, you'll see that the, the job has started executing. So if we go back Back to our shell prompt and then we run that watch command again you'll see here that a new pod gets created with the name of test one that was the name of our pipeline so it's going to go ahead and create that container and pull in canico and then from within that container is where that docker image will be built and pushed so let's go back into our jenkins and we can monitor the output of the console follow along in here Oh, we have a failure. Let's see what happened here. Oh, because it's missing a particular plugin. So this clean workspace plugin is missing, which is why it failed. So if we go back to our dashboard, manage Jenkins, let's manage plugins, and we'll search for an available plugin called workspace cleanup. So let's install this without restart. And again, this just makes sure that the environment is cleaned up. And in fact, if we're using ephemeral containers, we can remove that from this build step but since uh, since i have it in there we'll just install the plugin let's go back to our dashboard let's go back to our job and then build it and then let's follow along inside of our console output so you'll see that it's creating this new pod and then this time it should complete. So if we give this just a few moments, it's going to clone the repository, and then it will use Canico to build that container. So you can see that it's fetched the latest version of our repository, which was committed with a code commit of added Canico. And then this should just take a, a moment to build here. And while that's actually happening, we can go ahead and actually sign into our Docker Hub account. So we can make sure that that container is indeed pushed. So let's sign into Docker Hub. Okay, perfect. So let's go back into our Jenkins job and we can see that it is still going through and now it's pushing it into this repository and it's gonna have a tag of 1.0.0-2 and it's successful. So let's go back into our Docker Hub now. We'll give this a refresh. You can see here that it was just pushed a few seconds ago and this is the tag that was applied. So again, this was a very quick tutorial on how to install Jenkins on Kubernetes and use Canico to build your containers. If you're looking for anything more specific or would like some more detail, I have some more videos that talk about Jenkins and Jenkins pipelines. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll go through uh, all my comments and answer any questions. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up, a like, and a subscribe. It does help my channel. Thank you very much and have a great day.